Now, Paytm is India's largest payment company, but it's been losing money over the last three years. Every two Indians who uses a digital payment app is on PhonePay. PhonePay has raised $700 million in the latest funding round and has been valued at $5.5 billion. Across the 447 million user mark, with a 50% market share. Offline is growing exponentially for us. We are adding almost 6 to 7 lakh merchants every month in India right now across 70 cities. Paytm rallied close to 15% in trade after reporting a strong loan growth for the month of January. The company is adding roughly 800 to 900,000 devices every quarter and these devices are helping contribute to loans dispersed. Hi everybody! PhonePay and PTM are two of the most formidable players in the Indian fintech industry. And in the past 1.5 years, they have engaged in a fierce business war to emerge as champions of the Indian payments industry. While PhonePay beat every other company to become a market leader in the UPI volumes, PTM has had a terrible run at the stock market and we all know why. PTM went public last year in India's biggest ever IPO, but the shares fell as low as 70% below listing price in the months. Paytm is India's largest payment company, but it's been losing money over the last three years. Stock has hit an all-time low and is now down almost 80% from its issue price. Your business performance week has done a buyback. Then after 6 months, you will come to another bad situation. Your business is the same situation and your money has lost. But you know what guys? While most people, including myself, were looking down at Paytm thinking it to be yet another balloon startup, what I strangely discovered is that Paytm has made some extraordinary progress in the past two years. When you solve for masses, when you solve for India, when you solve for the last person, last mile, you can still make money and you can make discovery or business models that will be long-term sustainable. How does this is the business model? Well, Paytm has come out with its quarter four FY22 numbers and solid set of numbers across the board. When we look at number of loans, they've gone up over four and a half times on a year-on-year -year basis now. Loan distribution business scale up hua hai. 6.8 million loans diye hai. 1.5 percent ka uchal. Now, although its stock price is a different story altogether, if you look deep into their strategies, you will be surprised to know that although on paper, PhonePay is the market leader in UPI volumes, Paytm has pursued a secret project because of which today, it seems to be far, far ahead of PhonePay. The question is, what exactly is this secret project that Paytm has been working on? How is this secret project changing the dynamics of the Indian payments industry? How will this secret project help Paytm become profitable? And most importantly, what are the lessons that we need to learn from this business war between Paytm and PhonePay? But before we move on, I want to quickly thank our partner Smallcase for supporting our content. People, the budget of 2023 is going to play a key role in benefiting specific sectors in the Indian markets. And if you want to check which kind of company will benefit due to the policies mentioned in this year's budget, you must check out this beautiful list put out by Small Case, whereby they have put out both the budget announcement and the small case that could actually become a beneficiary of this announcement. And these small cases are nothing but hand-picked stocks that are expected to have a high growth potential with the economic growth of India. For example, here you have the green energy small case that is set to benefit because of the 35,000 crores of capex allocation and the rural demand small case that could benefit because of the spending of the government to boost the rural economy of India. The best part is that the small case manager himself will rebalance these stocks such that you can get the best returns in any market conditions. So if you're somebody who wants to make some strategic investments into the Indian stock market, download the small case app from the link in the description. Chalo, let's start from the basics. The date is 2016. The Prime Minister of India declared demonetization and overnight 80% of India's currency was declared invalid. Aaj Madhya Ratri, yani 8 November 2016 ki Ratri ko 12 baje se vartman mein jari 500 rupaye aur 1000 rupaye ke currency not legal tender nahi rahenge. Ye mudraye kanunan this is what pushed the digital payment revolution in India. And long story short, Paytm became a market leader because it had already laid its foundation with both marketing and brand awareness. But within some time, PhonePay came out of nowhere and became a market leader. Why? Because PhonePay offered the UPI feature. And since Paytm was almost one year late to UPI, 
फोन पे बिकेम अ मार्केट लीडर इन अ वेरी वेरी शॉर्ट स्पैन सो इफ दिस रीकैप इज वेरी वेरी क्लियर टू यू लेट्स डाइव इन टू दर बिजनेस मॉडल्स टू सी हाउ दिस बिजनेस वॉर इज प्लेंग आउट You see guys both phone pay and paytm have a very very similar business model and both these models revolve around three types of products to create an irreversible ecosystem for their customers and these three types of products are the entry product the retainers and the upsell secondly these three products have two completely different segments of customers which are number one are consumers like you and me and number two are the merchants like a grocery wala and our pet shop owners so let's start with the most important factor of this phone pay versus paytm saga which are there are three types of products you see guys the biggest problem with payment apps from the business standpoint is that they have a very very low barrier to entry for their customers so when it comes to switching a bank account we all know how tough it is when it comes to something like instagram we have a unique investment in the app in the form of network of followers but with payment apps it's very very easy just put in your mobile number otp bank verification happens in 120 seconds and boom you can switch from phone pay to paytm now although this might look very very trivial to you and convenient to you as a customer if you look at it from the business standpoint it is practically a nightmare for both phone pay and paytm why because to acquire every single customer they have invested a lot of money perhaps more than a thousand rupees to acquire you as a user and with immense difficulty they just started to recover this thousand rupees of customer acquisition cost by charging you 2 to 30 rupees as commissions on your recharge but as soon as you switch the app both this customer acquisition cost and this recurring income goes down the drain within a jiffy and same is the case with shopkeepers also since bharat pay and paytm offer the exact same services of upi tomorrow if there's another app that gives them 1000 rupees cash back they will switch immediately day after tomorrow if someone else comes and offers 2000 rupees cash back again they will switch so with many of these venture funded startups popping up from every corner of the country the cash back war kept on going and going so in this industry there is very very less delta between your offering and your competitors offering and even if you acquire your users by spending a thousand rupees on them you would never know when they would switch this is exactly what was happening between phone pay paytm and google pay whereby these companies kept on spending on cashbacks and kept on losing money and the users like you and me and the merchants kept on enjoying these cashbacks and kept on switching these apps this is the reason why there was a dire need for a customer retention tool and guess what this is why ladies and gentlemen the three product strategy comes in which are your entry products your retainers and your upsells for example if you buy an iphone that is your entry level product and then when you start using facetime and imessage you are making an investment into the product in the form of chats and file sharing and eventually even habituation kicks in and because you can't get your i messages in your android phone your habit of i message plus your chats act as retainers to make you to cling on to apple now here's where you will say bro why would i stick to iphone just because of a few chats in just one app well that is true that is why apple doesn't just have one retainer but multiple retainer services to keep you hooked onto the ecosystem some of these apps include apple podcast apple health apple fitness plus and many more So once you get a hang of these retainers the upsell happens. In this case if you got an iPhone 12 you are more likely to buy an iPhone 15 this year because although your phone has become old you still want to hold on to your investments in the form of i messages fitness data and everything else. Similarly if you look at my case 3 years back I bought a MacBook Pro then I bought Final Cut Pro software to edit my videos which costed me around 25000 rupees. And now fast forward to 3 years later I am so habitual to this software and its user interface that if I make a switch to Windows learning Premiere Pro is going to be very very exhausting. So I've already made two heavy investments 25000 rupees and 3 years of habituation. Therefore when I go on to buy my next laptop it is more likely to be a MacBook Pro. And this is where this purchase of MacBook Pro is my upsell product. and my retainer in this case is the final cut pro software plus my habituation this is the most basic level of the ecosystem hold of apple and once this magic happens retainers like fitness apps get you to buy a smartwatch handouts get you so habituated that you can't live without it the touchpad is so crazy that it almost makes you incapable of using another touchpad and once you buy two apple products and you start using air drops google drive and data cables will almost start to look ancient to you 
So the more time you spend with Apple products, the more difficult it is for you to get out of the ecosystem. This is the magic of the three element strategy of the Apple ecosystem that are your entry products, your retainers and your upsell. If this is very, very clear to you, let's see how Paytm use the same framework to retain their merchants. You see, for merchants, they had three options, Bharat Pay, Phone Pay and Paytm. And all of them were offering the same type of services at zero cost. Now, although these three companies had an entry product in the form of QR code and payment receiver, they did not have a retainer that could prevent these merchants from actually switching these apps. And this is where, ladies and gentlemen, Paytm came up with a game-changing product. As you all know, when there were too many customers at the shop, it was becoming very very difficult for the shopkeeper to check whether you paid for the product or not merely by looking at your payment receipts. So this is when Paytm launched something called the Paytm Soundbox. And you all must have seen or heard this soundbox a dozen times, isn't it? This soundbox मिलने से हमको मालूम पड़ जाता है कि हाँ वहाँ पे कस्टमर अगर पैसा पेड करते हैं तो हम थोड़ा दूरी पे रहते हैं तो हमको मालूम पड़ जाता है। Paytm पर 40 रुपए प्राप्त हुए। And more importantly, they did not just release the product quickly, but even distributed them to the shopkeepers so fast that before their competitors could understand its value, design it and distribute it. Paytm had already acquired a huge market share among merchants. So while Paytm started its distribution in 2020, it took Bharat Pay and Phone Pay two freaking years just to start the distribution of the Soundbox. But you know what, guys? By that time, it was already too late. And if you look at how far Paytm is today, it will blow your mind. As of this August 2022 report, while Phone Pay had one lakh devices deployed. Bharat Pay had 3 lakh devices deployed, but Paytm alone had 30 lakh devices deployed among merchants all across the country. Now most people will be like, yeah bro, so what? What is the big deal with this sound box? And how will this little device help Paytm recover from the hundreds of crores of losses that they've piled up over the past few years? Well, guess what? The interesting thing about this sound box is that, while most people look at the sound box as yet another Paytm feature, what we fail to realize is that this little sound box has proven to be the most amazing customer retention tool for Paytm to hold on to their merchant customer base. Why? Because to use this sound box, you need to have the Paytm app. So in these two years span, while PhonePay and Bharat Pay were busy doing other things, the shopkeepers had no other option but to stick with the Paytm sound box. And in these two years, using the merchants and merchant data, Paytm has become a giant loan aggregator company. The question is how? Well, this is where Paytm's upsell product came in, which are POS machines and loan disbursements. To tell you about it, while most of us only look at Paytm as a business-to-customer -business, business, what we often overlook is that they are also a huge business-to-business -business fintech company. And one of the most lucrative business that the banks have not touched upon properly is the merchant lending space. Long story short, while salaried people easily get loans because of a consistent source of income, your grocery store owners or your pet shop owners do not get loans very easily. This is quite understandable because the conventional banks do not have enough data to understand the risk of lending to a pet shop owner or a grocery store owner. And according to a report by the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Finance, the MSME sector of India faced a credit gap of 20 to 25 trillion rupees. As in, 20 to 25 trillion rupees worth of loans are needed by our medium and small scale enterprises but are not available in the current lending markets of India. And these very same MSMEs together contribute to 30% of India's GDP. So you see, there was a big, big problem that was left unaddressed in the Indian market. And this is why, ladies and gentlemen, Paytm and Bharat Bay came up with their merchant lending feature. Now the question over here is, if the banks couldn't do this, what was so special about Bharat Pay and Paytm that they could actually tap onto this merchant lending opportunity? And more importantly, how do they intend to use this to become profitable? Well, this is where Paytm's data processing superiority comes in handy. And here's an oversimplified explanation of its working. Just like a credit card companies note our spending pattern every time we make a payment, every time you make a payment at a store through the QR code, the Paytm's algorithm takes note of the cash flow at the merchant's end. Similarly, when the merchant pays his suppliers through Paytm, the algorithm keeps note of his monthly inventory value. Similarly, it also keeps note of his spending pattern and several other parameters like the estimated projected savings, income, consistency of income and so on and so forth. And just like a credit card company looks at your spending pattern to decide how credit worthy you as an individual are, Paytm uses its data to calculate the risk of lending to a particular merchant. This way, without paperwork, Paytm's algorithm can decide the credit worthiness of a merchant. 
So this way, all the progress that our Kirana stores have made officially gets documented through Paytm's algorithm. And once enough data is collected, tomorrow, if the algorithm sees that a Mr. Pandey has a healthy net flow of 5 lakh rupees per month, and if he's requesting a loan of 30,000 rupees, Paytm will immediately process the loan without any paperwork or collateral. Similarly, if a Mr. Sundar has an inflow of 1 lakh rupees, but requests a loan of 3 lakh rupees, since the risk is high, Paytm might charge a higher rate of interest as compared to Mr. Pandey. And once this lending procedure starts, the algorithm gets smarter and smarter at risk assessment based on merchants' loan repayment history and their credit score. And this business venture of Paytm has become so, so powerful that in January 2023, Paytm said its loan disbursals soared by 327% to 3,920 crores with 3.9 million loans dispersed. This is how Paytm jumped one curve ahead by finding a small but very, very powerful gap to retain its merchants in the crowded and hyper-competitive digital space of India. But as far as PhonePay is concerned, they just started their lending and their Sonbox distribution from 2022. So their numbers as of now are not that impressive. So the question over here is, is PhonePay completely out of the race? Well, not at all, because while Paytm and BharatPay are competing in the merchant lending space, PhonePay is doing an incredible job in the customer space. Like I said, today they are a market leader with a 47% market share in the UPI payments volume. So the question is, what is PhonePay's strategy and how are they planning to compete against Paytm? Well, as it turns out, since PhonePay has a humongous reach, they plan to leverage this reach in four specific ways. Number one is insurance. And you'll be stunned to know that PhonePay sold a million two-wheeler insurance in just the nine months of its launch. Number two is investment and wealth management. Number three is setting up an e-commerce app with an aim to disrupt the quick commerce market. And number four is the data center services wing for large corporations, financial institutions and startups. Now, I don't know if you see this, but then there are two big, big problems with their offerings. First of all, PhonePay does not look like a specialist in any of these things that they do. So today, if you go and ask someone if they would like to buy insurance from PhonePay, there is a certain degree of skepticism. Secondly, insurance, investment and wealth management, all of them have some of the most powerful specialist competitors in the space already. For insurance, you've got Policy Bazaar and Ditto. For investment, you've got Grow and Zeroda. For wealth management, you have specialist firms like Niveshai, True Beacon and Marshallis. And for personal loans, you already have Bajaj Finance and the banks themselves. On top of that, when it comes to personal loans for the most credit worthy people in the country, Cred has already laid a solid foundation for P2P lending. And lastly, for quick commerce and e-commerce, I don't have to tell you how competitive the space is and how much cash drain is required just to establish yourself in the market. So long story short, amidst all these specialists, it's going to be a mighty challenge for PhonePay to win the trust of its customers. So as of now, if you look closely from the customer standpoint, perhaps the only retainer that both PhonePay and Paytm have is their habituation with the app and their seamless bill payment system. But as far as the upsell in the customer space is concerned, there is a big, big challenge both for PhonePay and Paytm. This is how Paytm and PhonePay are locking horns to build a powerful ecosystem both for the customers and merchants so that they can finally spend less on cashbacks and marketing and make actual money for their investors. And this brings us to the last part of the episode and that are the lessons that we need to learn from this business war between PhonePay and Paytm. Lesson number one, if you want to beat your competition, always jump to the next curve and build a barrier to entry. In this case, first Paytm went ahead with its brand awareness, then PhonePay went ahead with UPI, then Paytm came up with its sound box, and by the time PhonePay could come in, Paytm had surged way ahead of its competition. Lesson number two, customer retention is always more important than customer acquisition. Because while acquisition comes at a cost, retention will actually help you recover these costs. So if you're in a hyper competitive space, always ask yourself, what are the retainer hooks in my product that will help me upsell the other products in my portfolio? Because unless you have these hooks, your business is resting on a very, very weak foundation. In this case, we saw how a small sandbox did all the magic for PTM. And last and most importantly, when you build retainers, see if the customers who stick for the retainers are capable enough to buy the upsell products or not. In this case, while Paytm was very successful in retaining and selling loan services to business owners, what remains to be seen is if PhonePay can replicate the same with the customers amidst all the specialists in their respective domains. 
And if you have a constructive opinion to add on to this, please let me know in the comment section. That's all from my side for today, guys. If you learned something valuable, please make sure to hit the like button in order to make YouTube Baba happy. And for more such insightful business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.